Hello everybody, my name's Steve, I'm the British Railroader. Welcome to the Model Railway Room and we're here for another Shows You How video. And the subject of today's Shows You How video is the fitting of one of these. This is a Gauge Master um, automatic frog polarity switch. Um, I believe in America they may be known as frog juicers. Um, it's a way of making sure that if you have unpowered frogs, um, uh, the, of the electrofrog variety that Pico make or the unifrog variety that Pico make, which I use on the layout, you can actually power the frogs and it does it automatically without you having to throw a switch. A lot of frog polarity selectors rely on you having a point motor or a switch machine, whatever you want to call them, that throws the switch and literally moves the polarity from one side to the other. But obviously with the advent of DCC, this can be done electronically. And Gauge Master produce over here in the UK, similar products I'm sure are available in the USA, um, their own polarity um, switch, automatic polarity switch. Never used these before. Um, I got this today at John Dutfield's Models in Chumpsford. Um, I was speaking to Ken, the owner, and he said he's heard some quite good things about these. They come in either packs of one um, for about eight quid or packs of three for about 21, 22 pounds, depending on where you buy them. Obviously, a pack of three is much better value. I've just bought the one for now because I'm just going to fit it to one set of points just to see how I need to fit it and do it as almost like a proof of concept. So what we'll do is we'll go down onto the workbench and we will open it up, have a quick look at the instructions. Um, there will be a little bit of soldering required, so I'll get the soldering iron out and we'll make a start. OK, so what we have here are the instructions for the um, Autofrog um, component. Um, on this side, it just gives you a little explanation. And on this side, it shows you how to wire it. So here is the actual um, device. And if I turn it up this way, you can see it has one, two, three solder pads. This one goes here and goes to the dropper wire from the frog. And then this one goes to the track feed that side. And this one goes to the track feed that side. Um, obviously, if you've got a point facing the other way, then we're going to turn it upside down so that we get like that, so the track feeds go in the right direction. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder um, some wires to this. Now, on my layout, um, and I'm just checking underneath, that yes so it looks like this wire will need to be red and this wire will need to be black because this pad will be going to the outer track this pad will be going to the inner track um, and then obviously that will go to the frog wire now you may remember that when i did this i set up the layout so that all of the um, frog wires uh, were basically I let them drop down so that I could um, ensure that uh, it would be easy enough for me to do this retrospectively. Um, so all the wires are there. So I know solder this. I'm going to solder these two pads obviously down here, but this one I'll have to solder up on the layout. Um, and I may not bother showing you that bit because that's going to be fun. But I will put a blob of solder on there just to get it started. Right, so let's get our wires. So as I said, this wire is going to be red. I get a length of, so the wire I'm using, I don't know what gauge this is, um, but it's the wire that I did all of my um, kind of uh, dropper wires with. So I'm just gonna take this off. Oops. Strip a bit from each end using my trusty ancient wire strippers. Like so. There we go. 
Now the good thing is, is because I use screw terminals on the um, uh, the uh, power bus, um, I've been able to. Uh, you, I, I don't need to solder the the ends to the wires or use clips. I can just use um, the screw point terminals, which makes me feel as if I don't make any sense whatsoever. All right, let's solder on here. My trusty, slightly clean soldering iron, which is most unusual for me. I'll put that on there. Little touch of solder. Oops. And this wire. Here we go. And then this is difficult because the thing is moving around all the time. So what I'm going to do is get something to keep it still. Clip that on there. That's better. Much better. That means that I don't end up messing it up. Come on. There we go. That's that one on. I'm going to do the same with some black wire. Try not to knock over the camera. So we'll put a little bit of solder on the back end of this black wire. And you notice there's already some solder on the pad for this side. Um, I don't know where that came from. Sometimes find that with some electrical components, you just find an odd bit. So it's going to not give talks in the mouth. There we go. Okay, that's that soldered. So the next time you see this, it will be up on the layout with this bit soldered to the um, dropper wire. Okay, so here we are underneath the layout. You can see the frog juicer has been connected. Oops, there we go, out focus. Just here um, to the, the um, wire, the dropper wire from the frog of the point. And these wires I've connected into my main bus wire here um, to adjust the polarity. Um, it took a moment to get it to kind of work. It kept shorting at one of the points. I think it needed to be set. I needed to run a loco through this particular set of points. Um, and the other facing set of points needed to kind of get used to it. Um, but there you go. Um, all installed, all working correctly. I thought the instructions were nice and easy. Um, and I'll see how it goes. And maybe I might do the rest of the layout. OK, there we go. That's um, that fitted to the tracks. Is it going to make a huge amount of difference to a lot of the locos I run? Probably not, because I do tend to fit keep lives um, in them. But, you know, sometimes it, you will get a shorter wheelbase loco, something you can't fit a um, keep alive in. So it's always worth doing. Um, and will I fit them to the rest of the um, switches? Probably. Um, I, the kind of thing that I'll pick a pack of three up and fit it to another three and then get another couple of singles and just, you know, make sure that uh, everything's up and running and wired properly. But there we go. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe. Um, I, as I'm filming this, I think I have got 565 subscribers. I've picked up a few in the last few days. Thank you very much to everybody who's a new subscriber. It's good to see you. Um, I don't think I'm going to hit the magic 600 by New Year. I've got a couple of days to go. So unless there's a major rush, I don't think it'll happen. But anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe. But that's it. My name's Steve. I'm the British Railroader. Thank you for watching. And I'll say goodbye from the Model Railway Room.
Bye-bye.